what is music for you? Yeah, music is uh, for me like a, like a language. I think it's a, a worldwide language. If you come to another country, you have different languages, but you have only one language in music. So it's that what what it means. Music for me is something that I cannot imagine uh, to be missing in my life because I grew up with the, basically with church music, and uh, it was always around. My grandfather was playing the organ in the church, so I grew up with that spiritual sounds and uh, choral music and. Uh, I have uh, four older brothers and sisters and they're all making music, so I actually can't describe what it is beca because it's so close to uh, everything I do every day. I, I think it's the most direct art that no one can, uh, that no one can uh, refuse to feel. It's the m most direct form of uh, cultural communication between human beings? Phew, that's a big question. <laughs> music for me, well, I guess the most important thing is about communication and music's ability to communicate pure and truthful emotions mm -hmm. in, uh, in a very real way and real time. I think that's one thing that's very special about all sorts of music is uh, its ability to convey human emotion through sound. How did you make the decision to, uh, to start to play jazz? Um, Why is jazz for you? I jazz, jazz just. I w I wouldn't uh, divide music into into genres or jazz as a special. I mean, jazz has a has a is a combination of so many things nowadays and uh, people try to put everything into different uh, systems and try to analyze where does it come from, what is the specialty, but I think jazz musicians are very versatile musicians, but um, I, I don't like to define jazz because uh, that's not what I only do and uh, I can't imagine it without anything else. Yeah, it's the same, it's a special language because um uh, until now, until 70, 80 years ago, we had the language of classical music. But if you were going to another country, you had to do rehearsals and you had to practice. And and jazz is is different because there's a very um, sometimes difficult theory about playing. But if you learn that, you can go to every country and uh, every country, and you can play directly with everybody. Yeah, I think jazz music is—it's a very special uh, sort of music because, for one thing, the the amount of improvisation that's involved, and uh, how the musicians have to be very uh, sensitive to each other's feelings, and to also the, the audience and the room that you're playing and. Because uh, we, we communicate spontaneously on the spot with each other. Mm -hmm. So it takes a, a certain amount of, uh, first of all, a, a balance between yin, yin and yang, between confidence and s sensitivity. Well, what genres do you prefer also besides jazz? You told something, something more. Oh, about I love uh, ancient music. Um, Fifteenth, uh, sixteenth century. I love the, the the wind music that they made in that time for the, for baroque trombones, baroque instruments, Renaissance music. German Renaissance music is beautiful. Uh, or Central European Renaissance music. Uh, then I love the romantic music, the you know the harmonic details of the nineteenth century piano music. Well, everything. I, I love to play you know some some sort of classical music. For me, it's good training for uh, the embouchure and stuff. Uh, I love to play dance music, you know, uh, because that's a great feeling uh, when you're on stage and you have an audience and they're moving to your music, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a really great feeling. Mostly if I go to holidays so to some other countries, I listen to other music, to tango music or to Brazilian music, so I, now I produce a Brazilian duo, 
from North Brazil, yeah? It's nothing to do, normally it has nothing to do with jazz, but there's a lot of jazz in that, so nobody knows. So I'm like, like young people, to find young people, I, I'm always interested to find new music. What is your favorite song? favorite musicians if you had one. Yeah, I've, I've favorite songs, but uh, there's one song I like always to play and it's titled uh, I Remember You. So, um, and if I come back, it's always, I see all the faces and some new faces, but I always say, I remember you. Improvisation. Yeah. What do you think about when you improvise? I try not to think. I, I try to uh, to clear my head and uh, try to get into a, a zone where uh, I'm not thinking and I'm letting sort of the creative part of my brain sort of be open to impulses from the other musicians and uh, yeah, I'm trying not to think. Uh, when I improvise, I don't think at all. I don't try to think at all. I mean, sometimes you have to. To, to look, you know, if you if you play anything that you don't know so well, you have to see where it's going, where the change is going, when you're improvising with a sheet. But uh, my problem, or uh, actually, it's not a problem, is that my ears are better than my than my eyes. So whenever I have a situation where where I don't know what to do, actually, I trust my ears. Mostly, is that what I I hear? It's it's like singing. If you sing something. Uh, it's the idea to play that on your instrument, because uh, I'm not a singer, so my voice is not so good, but I can sing. So I can sing ba ba do da ba di ba do b so. And I'm interested to play the same idea on the instrument. Yeah. yeah so, uh, and I can improvise with my voice. It's the easiest way to improvise, so I can ba ba do da ba di ba do ba ba do ge da ba da ba do ba di ba 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 ba. So this is very easy, but to do it on the instrument. It's much more difficult, and the idea is to improvise with a great sound on your instrument. Do you practice a lot? What what make you what made you so so uh, big musician? Yeah, I practice a lot. Uh, uh, I'm also traveling a lot, so sometimes it's tough to get in time to practice when you're on the road. But I always do. When I'm at home, I try to practice six hours a day, six to eight hours a day, trumpet, maybe an hour or two of piano, and an hour of drums. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, I mean, the thing is, you know, you have to sort of live it, you know? It's not like uh, you wake up and you go to a job and you're there from, you know, eight in the morning till five in the evening. It's like you dream of music, it's in your head, you wake up and you're, you have to live the music. I love getting together with people and uh just get in situations and uh, I get a lot from listening to to different players and uh, uh, I hope to absorb it very quickly what they do and uh, when I get something that catches me a sound or harmonic skills or whatever any interesting thing that can happen in, in music not only in jazz music I try to catch it and uh, it's like it's like when a, when, a, when a painter or a photographer picks every every uh, situation that he likes with a camera. I try to get the stuff that I want for my music or for my, uh, yeah, for my sound. I try to absorb it. I, I, I don't know, I never thought about that. Because I started at the age of 12 or 13 to think about jazz music and uh, I never lost contact of this idea. So that means I never thought about that. Suddenly you are 17 or 18, suddenly some people ask you to play on on this uh, European contest or whatever, and suddenly they like it. What do you think about this Jazz Academy? Is this your first time No, here? it's, it's, oh, a, it's, it's the second time. I second was here last year, and uh, well, it's great to be here again, to see the progress that the people made and to 
to see that the students work with the recommendations that you gave and uh, you know how, how, how they find their way. Only, even if it's only one year, uh, a lot has changed and the people play different. They got in business, they got their way. That's, that's the great thing when you can um, stay in the workshop for a longer time. Can you compare this jazz academy, this summer jazz academy, with regular academies? Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> this is a regular academy too. You know? Really? Yeah, I think it's, it's a really great friendly atmosphere, mm -hmm. first of all. Very nice musicians, very motivated musicians. That's really important. And a um, great team of teachers. Yeah. And uh, what I love about this academy is how it's been growing over the past, what, three years now? Yeah. Uh, I think the first year there was maybe 25 students, and the second year maybe 40, and this year I think 80 something, yeah. right? Yeah, something like that. yeah. This is Summer Jazz Academy, so this is um, a meeting of 10 days. So this is easy for us and easy for the pupils because they like to come. We started with 13, last year it was 50, now we have 70. So the workshop is successful, but a normal academy is, is lessons every week. So you have uh, two hours big band, you have two hours ensemble, you have two hours theory, uh, you have two hours instrumental lessons, a lot of things near the school. You have to, to do the school and the things. So this is a full-time job. And here you have no school because we are in holidays. And if you do uh, this every week, two or three years, it's completely different from the summer workshop. Yes. Can you find here some good musicians? Yeah, there are yeah? great musicians here. Yeah. They're not begin only beginners, right? No, no, yeah. no, no, some top level musicians, mm -hmm. yeah. Guys, yeah, Whew. I mean, I could say some names, you know, Fedor Rushkuk, uh, Adam Clem, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, they're world-class musicians. You can't find a better bass player or a better saxophone player, you know. <laughs> really? Voislav, he plays great. Uh -huh. uh, Django. 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 Uh... We have a great tenor player. His name is Rosco or something like that. So it's always difficult for me to remember all names. Because yeah, yeah. this year we have a lot of people, 70. It's great. But there are always two or three you are looking for it, maybe you take them and you ask them, can you go and come to our big band this year? Maybe you are looking for them for three or four years because you know they need some time. It's different. So for the story of every young talent is different. Oh, uh, is there something specific about some yeah, musicians? Well, the, 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 first thing, the first thing that I uh, realized was when, I, uh, it was last year when we got uh, to the ensemble rooms in the music school. Uh, there were all kinds of uh, classes going on in the, in the, in the rooms. And uh, the first thing I realized was the rhythm. In every corner, was, there was a different rhythm. And it was uh, some accordion player playing really freaky stuff. It was terrific. Who is your favorite musician? Do you have a favorite musician? Oh, that's tough to say. Of course. Uh, yeah. I would say the musician that I listen to most when I'm at home and I'm relaxing and I put on a nice record, either Miles Davis or John Coltrane. Mm -hmm. Describe uh, these students in three words, maybe. In three words. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough, right? Huh? It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's think. Motivated. Intelligent. And open. Curious. Open-minded. And uh, yeah, very, very positive. I think a good idea about timing, because you have the history of this seven, eight feeling, and 
uh, tough. Most most of them are very tough. And interested, motivated. Can you tell me one one interesting one interesting story, uh, one uh, special friendship or something like that? Yeah, well, I mean, I got so many beautiful friends all over the world that I've met through through music. Uh, at the moment, I'm playing a lot with a, a drummer in Switzerland, Samuel Dusler, and we've been playing together since uh, 1999. So that's what 14 years mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we play, you know. A lot of tours together, and I'm the godfather of his his daughter, and uh, yeah, that's a really special relationship for me. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Four, no, five years ago, I met a trombone player called Jigs Wickham. Uh, I think everyone who likes jazz has heard of Jigs Wickham. He um, he was playing in the Stan Canton big band and uh, in the Count Basie big band. He's really one of the last old trombone players of that area, and. Uh, he uh, moved to Germany in the 60s and uh, now he's a very important uh, educator and his um, approach to how to make people love music is incredible. I'm not a typical German because at the age of 19 I was, to the, I was going to the Netherlands to study there. I was living there 13 years so I, sometimes I have another mind of of, of things what, which are going on in Germany. So that, that brings me to the idea to make cooperations with other countries. So we have cooperation with Novi Sad, yeah. we have also cooperation with uh, Prague, and we have a very long, since 15 years, cooperation with uh, Rostov von Don in, in Russia. <laughs> decided to come to Serbia for the first time and when when was that oh this is an interesting story because um, uh, I'm normal, normally I I'm, I'm organizing uh, the cooperation things in jazz for the city of Dortmund so we have partnerships town towns uh, so one is Rostov and Don and other uh, is uh, is uh, Amiens France uh, we have some in, in the States, and suddenly some, somebody said in 2003, oh, we have some partnership town in Serbia, Novi Sad. But nobody was there for a while. We have to knock on the door again. We need something to go there. We have to have a great chess festival. Maybe we can right. go there, but nobody knows what, what is going on there. So I said, okay, I have many young students. Let, let's take a bus, go there. So, and that was an unbelievable journey uh -huh. uh, with a bus with, with 25 students and, and professional musicians who are going to the border of, of uh, Austria, Italy. We had a lot of problems in Hungary. And I remember that we started 27 hours before and the, the concert was starting 20, 27 hours later. And we were exactly in time here, really? 30 minutes before the concert. The first time I came to Novi Sad, uh, when was it? 2006, maybe? Mm -hmm. And we played at the festival with Uva Platt and Andrei Stavarczyk. And we were here for maybe five days, and we were giving lessons here at the culture center. But it was a different culture center. Yeah. It was an older building, you know? Uh, and that's where we met Vesna and all, all these, these great people, I guess, you know? <laughs> What do you think about Serbia? You were only in Novi Sad and you were in some other places here. No, 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 just in Novi Sad, but uh, after this workshop I have a little time to, to travel around and I hope I can see some, uh, some more sides of that country. It's really, really beautiful. And um, I'm surprised by the, by, by the atmosphere of the town. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of Mediterranean almost. 
<laughs> and uh, I didn't uh, check uh, websites or books about the town. I just came here and uh, I was like, wow. I like the music very much. And I like, I like the jazz musicians here because they have mostly the same ideas I have. I have a lot of friends, musicians, which I play. So where I was now, I was in Indonesia with uh, uh, Fedor Uskuk and Sava Milicic, so two Serbian guys. And I like the food. <laughs> and the other projects I, I can see, you had a Brazilian week and you had, uh, I'm in contact with, uh, I like the, the art of doing the programs. I like to pick the things that I like from each musician, you know, the sound of this music. For example, in trombone playing, I love the sound of uh, people like Steve Davis and I love uh, the timing of uh, Rossellino and I love the spirit of uh, of J.J. Johnson and uh, you know you pick various things and combine your own thing but uh, there are there are some some people that uh, I really enjoy and not only for a week or for some days but that that provide uh, inspiration for a longer time. That's actually Steve Davis, the trombone player, that I really, really uh, admire for his pure way of writing, composing and playing, improvising. Serbian word? Uh, pivo. 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 Cool. <laughs> Vo Vojvodina. Vojvodina. Did you have a chance to, to, to hear maybe some Serbian music? Yeah, yeah. yeah? I've heard some uh, some of the, this uh, trumpet folk mm -hmm. music, you know? From folk music. Uh -huh. Gucha. 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 Yeah? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Is that good? Absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. You could, yeah. you could go there to play. I think maybe next year I want to go. Huh? Yeah, Why not? Yeah, because we come to Summer Academy, it's the week before, it's Gucci, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'll come a week early and go to So Gucci. you can go to Gucci maybe, to, to right? play yeah. and after... Maybe that. I can't play with them, they're too good. <laughs> yeah, they're too good. <laughs> Is improvisation important only in jazz or in whole life? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, I think, like the most good jazz musician, they can organize his life very well because they have to to take the right flights, they have to go to other countries. So, so you must be organized, but not too much. But you have to do your own stuff very well. In whole life, definitely. In every situation that you are, you have to be prepared to improvise. Whole life. Whole life. Whole life. You got to be free, man. That's yeah. the goal, you know. Uh -huh. I do it through the music, you know. But I think everybody sort of looking for their own way to be free, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you can always bounce off other people's energy, and learn how to improvise cool. in life, you know, cool. you'll be a, maybe a happier person, you know?